Sam Waterman. I am the Ninth District Intern, and on this week's Candidate Conversations episode, I am lucky enough to have Alyssa Bailey here with me. So Alyssa is running to represent District 62, and as someone who grew up in a rural community and now lives in Greene County, Alyssa understands the unique challenges facing rural communities and is ready to, to tackle them in the State House. Alyssa is also not new to serving Hoosiers, having served as a public school teacher, an Army veteran, and a union leader. She insists that she is not a politician. Alyssa is a dedicated community member committed to uh, making the state that we all love better. In terms of policy, Alyssa has outlined her main focuses in a plan she calls READ. With her READ plan, uh, she has a vision to R, revitalize District 62 by focusing on E, education, A, accessible and affordable healthcare, and D, developing the economy. Alyssa, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, so I always like to start off by asking what inspired you to run for office? Well, I became inspired to run for office after attending the Red for Ed rally back in November. While there, I met Representative Melanie Wright, and I just felt compelled to do something more for my district. I didn't agree with how our legislator was voting on things that impacted the community, such as tax increases while defunding public schools. And I felt that the bills that he authored and co-authored did not do much to actually better things in our area. So I felt that our voices were not being heard, and I wanted to give the district a better option. That's awesome. I hear from so many educators that the Red for Ed rally was really inspiring and that's awesome that you've taken this step to change things yourself. Uh, my second question is, you've often discussed the challenges facing rural communities. So what are these challenges and why don't you think they're being talked about? So our rural areas face many challenges, but most really stem from a lack of resources. For instance, Green County has only one hospital and it's a critical access hospital, which means they have several hoops that they have to jump through, including federal legislations and limitations on their size. Our schools are expected to compete across the state academically, yet we face constant cuts and limited access to needed resources. For example, during e-learning, we could not even ensure that all of our students had access to internet. Uh, we also have limited mental health resources available, and let's not forget infrastructure issues. Um, we see a lot of money going into the interstate. We have I-69 being um, worked on constantly throughout here, uh, but what about our rural roads that constantly need fixed due to the bad patch jobs that they receive, or they're completely neglected altogether? We also see a limited access to jobs. There are not as many work options, and with the cost of living and the pay, many people need to work multiple jobs to make ends meet. And I know that some of these are not limited to just rural areas, but they're certainly affected our communities. And I think that these issues are not being talked about enough because solutions require resources and our areas do not need more tax increases. So I think it's easier to sweep our needs under the rug. But the problem is that we don't need to go straight to tax hikes. We can work on these solutions with more transparency in our budgets and seeing where our money is actually going to. So the state previously spends a lot of money every year. And I think if we allowed our constituents a say in how that money is spent, that money would be directed into needed resources, not wasted. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I definitely agree with you on how um, needlessly a lot of our money is spent in the state and how it could be reprioritized to help the people that need it most. So uh, I also wanted to ask about your time in the Army National Guard and the Air Force Reserves. So what do you think that that taught you um, that makes you the right choice for District 62? Well, my time in the military really taught me how to listen and to lead with integrity. You can't be successful in the military by being deceitful or dishonest or manipulative. You have to earn trust and you have to show your commitment to your military family and to your country. And I currently, with the Air Force, I serve as an intelligence analyst, and that requires me to take in a lot of information, determine what's important, and understand how it could impact our mission. And I have to leave emotions at the door and make critical assessments. At the State House, I'd be able to serve District 62 in the same capacity. I'm a fighter, and our mission is to better our district and ensure that our children have opportunities to succeed, and no party will stand in my way when it comes to protecting my district. That's great. That's such a unique uh, opportunity and experience that you've gotten to have. And it's great that you, you're getting to serve the country in multiple capacities. 
Um, and so my last question is, uh, many people in Indiana often feel disaffected by politics because they feel so disconnected from their representatives. And I know that you touched on this before with how you said there's no transparency and people don't feel like they have a say in the budget and things like that. But how do you plan to stay in touch and connect with your constituents to make sure that they have a voice in the political process? So I've lived in my district for over six years and I've never been contacted by my representative. I've never been asked what issues were important to me and my family. And in fact, when I went to the Red for Ed rally at the state house in November with several other teachers, we could not even get a meeting with our legislator. My campaign is not taking that approach. I post my email address and I answer every email personally. We are calling, texting, and meeting people out wherever we go. I give out my cell phone number and encourage people to reach out anytime. When talking with people, I ask them how I can better represent them, their families. I ask what issues are important. And then I listen. <laughs> Whether our personal views are aligned or not, I make sure they are heard and I work to better educate myself and understand their position. If elected, I will not only be representing Alyssa Bailey or my family or even just my party, I'll be representing the 65,000 people that live in my district. And I don't know how I can successfully do that without talking to as many people as I can. Everyone deserves a voice and that voice will be heard at the polls when they cast their votes for state representative. But I wanna make sure that voice is heard beyond the polls. And I will do this by continuing to listen and connect with the very people that I hope to represent. That's incredible. We need more people like you that are that dedicated to their communities and actually listen to us. Thank you. Uh, well, that's all I have for you. Uh, I just want to thank you again for being here. Uh, it was so great to meet you and talk to you. Well, thank you so much for having me and I look forward to working together in the future.